Hello, Base World. This is for folks that are warming up and playing the area fifth grade festival in 2022 here in the Sioux Falls School District. I wrote a series of warm ups, and if you've taken a look at them, you may be wondering uh, what I was thinking. And so here is a little explainer, and I'll take you through a few of the things. A few things to note I am sitting down to play the bass. I am using a German bow, and I think my German bow hold is pretty okay. It's kind of like saying, I love you, and then you just get your bow here. Make sure the thumb is curved on the one side of the inside of the bow, and your index finger is along the stick there. Uh, other bass players come chime in, give me some pointers for improvement, um, doing the best I can helping our base community grow. So starting off here on the sheet, we have circle A, the very beginning. You have an E string, so you get to play first with the violins. Um, this is the bow pattern for French folk song. And I recommend that you begin with one measure of three quarter notes, and then a dotted half note up bow. It goes like this. One, two, Once you've mastered that on all the strings, then move on. So we've mastered three quarter notes and then a dotted half note. Let's see if we can do nine quarter notes and then a dotted half note. Try it, circle A. for the cellos to finish with the violas on this note C. The next circle is circle B, where we apply the same bowing pattern of nine quarter notes and one dotted half note to a D scale. One, two, three. some variation on this scale idea, but with notes that either go up and down in step, or up and leap and down in step, or in a pattern that combines all of that. Here's circle C. In this part, a bass player has lots of options uh, for fingering so that we don't have to do too many string crossings. I'm going to apply some of those here, so pay attention to my fingering as it lines up with the notes. especially at the top. Basically, whenever you're having to cross strings, if you have to shift between the notes, you just want to move your notes so there's no shifting involved. That's the way I wish I would have done it. Here's uh, the fifth measure of C, 37, 8, 9, 41. a better fingering for that passage. All right, let's see how Mr. T does on circle D. Sorry. 
string crossing or the finger, uh, the shift across the string. All right, circle E. Whew. I hope I make it through. Wish me luck. you might be able to play that better than me. Good luck. Next, we have the scales at F and G. Let's first play the scale at F like it's written, one whole note per note. I'm gonna use a quick tempo. One, two, three, four. G are scales, and you can apply the rhythms from H through V to those scales. For example, if we did circle H's rhythm on the circle F scale, it sounded like this at the beginning. <laughs> after circle F is circle G. And the difference between the two scales, I hope you see, is that the F is natural and the C is natural. Our fingering change on bass is a second finger for F instead of F sharp, and then a first finger for C instead of C sharp with two. Here's how that scale sounds. again, take the rhythms from circle H through circle V and apply them to the scales to give yourself some rhythmic training as well as your scale training. Oops, I did the M rhythm, but I cut off the last rest. Let me try that again. Rest. 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 And so on. Good luck on your scale. At circle W and circle X, we have the chance to join our, our neighbors in, in helping and supporting them. At circle W, we actually get to play a low note between the, the nut and the first tape. This note's actually called F natural. You might've had a chance to play it before. And it's the way to play Jaws. string is darn big and darn thick. So get yourself into it. Make sure you have a nice EWP line. Elbow, wrist, and pinky should be in a pretty straight line. A little more kink at the wrist for a bass player than a cello player. That's where that note lives. So at W, we're going to do the tremolo, which is the half note with the three slashes. Just back and forth as fast as your hand feels comfortable. Don't tighten up to make that fast. Do do it with a relaxed, loose, jolly arm. Okay, good luck. Here's a circle W on the E string. Now, X is on the A string. It's also played in the low one placement between the first tape and the knot. You 
may want to practice this without the left hand because going from treble oboe to normal quarter notes can sometimes be tricky, and then back from quarter notes to tremolos. You might practice it on an open D string. Like that. At circle Y, it's the same exact music at circle X. I uh, wish I had written this a different way because then you could play it up here. So same notes but an octave higher. Oh well, that'll be for the next edition. The last bit of music I wrote, uh, starting at Z, double A, double B, and double C, is a scale that uses slurs. Now a slur is the connecting of one, two or more notes on the bow uh, in the same direction of bow. So, sounds like this. You can also do this like you're doing jobs. Or you can do that between a one and a two, or a two and a four. And that way we can make a slur of multiple notes on one bow. Here in these exercises, it's only slurring two different notes. I'll start with double A on page three. to double B. Now the slur is on the down bow. Let's go right to double C next. to circle Z. Part of this packet is blank measures. Feel free to write music notes here or write um, uh, anything you like that would help support you in, in learning your fifth grade music. Um, as always, feel free to write any fingerings and shifting and position reminders so you can get around the bass. There's one part of the circle E exercise where you do have to get up to um, fourth position in order to get to this the high E that lives just above the fourth tape right here. Probably the highest E we know right now. Um, because the bass has a lot of options for fingerings and a lot of need to shift to reach all of these notes up and down the neck. And uh, it can be pretty complicated, so feel free to write in what you need to remind yourself. 
If you absolutely have to write in node names, you may, but I want you to remember that those are training wheels. We want to get rid of them once we're balanced. That is, you know how to read your music. When we see a note on the page, it gives us a lot of information, like a map gives us for a location in the world. But the map of music shows us the location of notes on our instrument, how long we play those notes, or fast we play those notes, how we might connect them with a bow direction, and how those notes relate to other notes. It's pretty complicated at first, but keep practicing at it, and eventually you'll only need to write in a few reminders to keep yourself playing the right notes at the right time. Well, good luck, my bass friends. Thank you very much for listening. I'll see you in the concert.